Hi guys, I'm Tyler. Today we are going to build a real-time filter monitor called a manometer that will work on any type of filter that you have. Whether it be a single stage system like this or maybe a highly modified two stage system like I have here in my shop. It'll also work on many of the ready-made cyclones that are available on the market and it'll even work on the jet style filters with the crank on top. Now, if you do have one of these jet style filters, you may have to modify the piece of PVC cap that you use to fit underneath that filter, but it can be easily done on the bandsaw. Now this manometer, like I said, can be installed in a wide range of systems. If your filter has a removable top, you can easily build one like this. If you have a DIY style plenum box like I have, it can go right in the middle on the top there as well. And if you have a filter with a permanent top on it, you can install it there as well. The biggest thing you need to be aware of is you don't want the entryway for the manometer to be directly in the airflow from your DC blower fan. There's a lot of science that goes into why this doesn't work, but it just doesn't work, so don't do it. Before we get into the build, I'd like to remind you guys to hit that subscribe button so you never miss a new upload. You will need a one and a quarter inch PVC cap, a quarter 20 by two and a half inch pan head bolt with two nuts and one lock washer, a 3 8 ID nylon hose barb, several cotton balls, and several feet of half inch outside diameter, 3 8 inside diameter flexible tubing, several screws, some scrap pieces of plywood, and some silicone caulk. I noticed a leftover flange on the PVC cap that I had. You want to make sure if you have something like this, you remove it so that the cap can sit flat on the lid of your filter. Mark and drill out a quarter inch hole through the top of the cap. Then switch over to a half inch Forstner bit and drill into the side of the cap. Drill towards the top so that you have room to cut this down if you need to fit underneath a crank of your filter. Before adding any silicone, I drove in the nylon hose barb just to make sure it would fit without any messy silicone. Once you can confirm that it fits properly, add some silicone and drive it home. Then go back to your quarter inch drill bit and drill one hole directly in the middle of your filter cap, whether it's permanent or removable, and a second quarter inch hole directly next to it. Stuff several pieces of cotton into the cap. This prevents any dust from getting through the manometer hole and clogging up your system. Add some silicone around the edge of the cap and bolt it into place. To bolt the cap on, you need to use the lock washer, the first nut to tighten everything down, and then use the second nut on top of the first to lock everything into place. I added a little silicone around the top of the bolt just for an extra seal. Moving on to make the actual gauge, you need a board to bolt your tubing down to. I cut mine at 6.5 by 12, but this is totally up to you. I drilled some evenly spaced 8 inch holes to accept some zip ties to hold the tubing in place. Painted my board white so that I had some extra contrast. And added some lines as a gauge using a permanent marker. Then I fed some zip ties through the front of the board, looped them around the back, and crimped the tubing in place. You need to add a little liquid of your choice so your gauge actually works, and I chose some water. Of course it was dyed orange. Connect the tubing to the nylon hose barb on the top of the filter, and now it is actually time to find the upper and lower level limits of this gauge. Turn your dust collector on with the filter as clean as can be and mark the lowest level that the water moves. Now try to completely block off your filter representing the worst case scenario and use some real duct tape to tape this bag in place because it will definitely try to take off on you. 
Fire up your system again, and this time mark the maximum level that the water goes, and this is going to represent your worst case scenario, some place that hopefully you never get to. I tried this on my in-house system and I was very pleased to see very, very similar results. As an example to show you guys how this filter can truly be added to any type of system, I am adding it to my in-house modified two-stage dust collection system. So there you go guys, a real time filter monitor that will save your lungs and hopefully save your filter in the long run. This thing only costs a couple bucks to build and it will take you an evening to put together and you'll absolutely love it. I put a little graph on mine with colors when I know I'm getting into the red, but really you should only have about an inch of water level raising in here before it's ready to clean your filter. If you would like to know more about these filters, you can watch a video that I've linked right here where I show you how to clean it and about a new filter that might help you out in that aspect. Please hammer that thumbs up button if you enjoyed this episode and please subscribe. I'm DIY Tyler, you guys have a good one.